Live from Case at 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. And we begin tonight with a child care shortage. It is yet another industry being hit by staffing troubles, leaving parents to make some tough, sometimes life changing decisions. Yeah, hundreds of local families are on the wait list at the YMCA of Greater San Antonio, but the organization says it needs more child care workers before they can bring on more kids. Our Tiffany Huertas with how this shortage of child care workers is also being felt across the country as well. I heard that there's like hundreds of kids on the waiting list. With child care shortages impacting communities across the country, Desmer De Leon feels lucky to have her kids at the YMCA of Greater San Antonio. To have child care means that I have somewhere safe for my kids to be at every day, so I don't have to worry about who's gonna pick them up. But hundreds of San Antonio families are waiting for after school spots to open. We're just over 300 um, children that are on that wait list. Shannon Gowan with the YMCA of Greater San Antonio says she's been getting heartbreaking phone calls from parents. They're asking where they are on the wait list. You know, they're saying I, I'm gonna have to choose between my job and finding, um, you know, being at home with my child. Um, you know, it's really difficult. Gowan says there's a a couple of reasons why this is happening. Our early learning centers um, for children who are under pre-K were at 25% um, capacity just because of COVID cases. And then um, our after school program were at 40% capacity just because of staffing shortages. The YMCA of Greater San Antonio is offering different incentives to child care workers, including a $250 sign-on bonus, and they've increased the starting salary. If you are a um, child care staff, you can get free child care at any of our programs, early learning center or after school. YMCA's across the country are dealing with similar issues. We're constantly communicating with one another about what are you doing to help um, recruit, to, to help with these staffing shortages, to help get kids back in the programs. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on that deadly drag racing event in Kerrville over the past weekend. Attorneys are about to file a lawsuit on behalf of the families of two victims killed on Saturday. They tell our Courtney Friedman there will likely be multiple defendants listed in that suit. Two families related and inseparable mourning together over the loss of eight-year-old Santiago and his aunt, 46-year-old Rebecca Cedillo. My clients, Ms. Cedillo and, and Santiago, had stepped down from the trailer and that they were proceeding to the concession area exactly at the moment when uh, the Ford Mustang lost control. Attorney Andrew Toscano has not filed a lawsuit yet as they continue to investigate. Possible defendants in the case include the event organizer Flying Diesel, the city of Kerrville, Kerr County, the insurance company, event vendors, the driver of the Mustang, and possibly the owner of the Mustang. There are issues of governmental immunity, with regards to the city of Kerrville and the county of Kerr. Which is why he says he and the other attorney, Sean Brown, are taking their time, but hope to file in the next week or so. When asked about the liability waivers other attendees told case that they signed, Toscano says he doesn't believe his client signed them. And in the event there is a potentiality that there was waivers, uh, there are multiple issues regarding waivers, especially with regards to children in the state of Texas. The attorneys also intend to file in Bear County, saying that's where the family's from and where his business is located. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Kerrville police have not filed any charges, and on Tuesday they confirmed to KSAT there was no criminal component to their investigation at that point. The man charged with the 2015 death of a beloved HEB employee will finally go to trial. On Monday, jury selection begins in R.C. Curtis's capital murder trial. He's accused of the October 21st, 2015 murder of 75-year-old Paula Boyd. Curtis was arrested and charged with her murder four months after it took place, and he's believed to be her grandson-in-law. Boyd was found dead in her north side apartment. An autopsy report later revealed she died from blunt force trauma and strangulation. Curtis was arrested twice in this case. He was first arrested right after Boyd's death for credit card abuse. He was accused of trying to use her credit cards at a gas station. At the time, police took DNA evidence from him. They said would later link him back to the crime scene. If found guilty, Curtis is facing life in prison without parole.
A little less than two hours to go if you want to get your vote in early for the Texas constitutional amendment election. The polls close tonight at 8 o'clock. There are eight proposed amendments on the ballot. Some of them include banning governmental entities from putting limits on religious services, changing eligibility requirements for judicial candidates, and providing tax exemptions for people whose spouses die while on duty in the armed services. There are also a number of area municipal races and school bonds on that ballot. To see a sample ballot and a list of polling locations, check out KSAT.com. Election Day is Tuesday, November 2nd. Also, a little less than two hours from now, the Day of the Dead River Parade will be back before a live crowd after having to do things differently along with just about everything else last year. Yeah, as we already told you earlier, at 5 o'clock, the crowd already beginning to gather down there as the excitement builds to see what promises to be some very amazing sights tonight. These floats are something else. Steve Spreester, Alicia Barrera hosting the parade live right here on KSAT beginning at 8. But right now they join us live for a preview from the Arneson River Theater. Guys? Yeah, Tim and Myra, we're actually on the stage here at the Artisan River Theater before things get started around 8 o'clock, live right here on KSAT 12. We are told that the parade is sold out, but there are still people coming down here just to be part of the environment and maybe even, you know, take in some of the sights and sounds that are part of Lava Ita tonight. And this has just been a long time coming. So many people coming together to make tonight's event happen. Right here you see Las Catrinas over here, the beautiful Ale is just the color, the excitement, of course, some marigolds adorning the stage and really just adding to the excitement of tonight, the yeah, colors. Absolutely. And if, if we swing around here, Miss Ayel, do you see the couple right there? They are already dressed up. They are ready. We are like less than two hours away from the parade time and they are ready to go. Just some of the sights and sounds down here at the Arneson River Theater. Like I said, this place is going to be packed. I am 100% with you, Myra, that we are looking forward to having the crowd interact with some of these floats. They were so beautiful and and meaningful last year, but there wasn't a crowd here. We could only bring it to you on TV. So and it's going to be a whole different environment and energy tonight. Absolutely. And this is why this event is happening. It is for the community. So the community can learn more about this beautiful culture tradition. That's Dia de Muertos. All right, we'll the outside see. where Stefania is. Yeah, and let's go right now up to Lava, the heart of La Villita, where Stefania Jimenez is getting ready for the post-parade party. Stefania. I'm not getting ready, Steve. I'm already there, okay? Because La Villita, where we are right now, it is lit. You have so many people walking through here right now. I mean, you can't, of course, as I as we go live here, the, the crowd starts to dwindle down. But trust me, there are a lot of people here walking around. Uh, just, you know, there are so many shops, so many things to do here, eat so many, eat so much food, different types of food. And here we've got the calabares, so people coming here, they're taking their selfies here because, you know, it's just a, it's just a good thing to do. People are just excited to come out. Um, after a year and a half of being stuck inside because of COVID, they're just ready to celebrate and just join in this holiday because it's so exciting. Joining us right now is Katie. She's a native San Antonian here. You can tell that she's got her gear all ready. So tell us what this holiday means to you and why you're here. Well, I'm, um, like you said, from San Antonio. I love our culture. I love everything about our city. Um, I'm a member of the Lobeo, which is part of the Raifeo. Uh, committee, so I do everything fiesta. Um, but my dad's uh, family was from Mexico. His mother was from Mexico, and so they're very religious, and they loved all these celebrations. And we've always loved dressing up in Halloween, and so the whole thing is just fun for us. Do you also think that this year, that this event takes on special meaning because of COVID? Everything that we've been through. You know, this is a holiday where we celebrate our loved ones who have passed on. Now we're post-COVID, and you know, this is just a special thing for a lot of Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Everything, uh, unfortunately, does relate back to COVID this year. Um, but, and we have lost some people, you know, unfortunately. But it, it's just, you know, um, amazing that we're able to gather now. And that's, you know, a big part of the celebration is that we, we are able to gather now that a lot of people have been vaccinated and stuff. So that's, I truly believe in that. And I'm, I'm glad to be part of it. All right, Katie. And we definitely need to get you a little more in the spirit. Get me ready. Get me ready. So, yes. Yes, you need to be masked up. All right. 
There and you now go. you look like. How you, does it look? Yes. You How does it look? Now. All right. <laughs> I'm super excited. So yeah, there is that element of gratitude, right? Uh, that people are just happy to be out and about this year because of everything that's happened. So tonight, when we talk about the parade and all these things, we're going to talk about a lot of the symbolism behind this event and why it's so important here in San Antonio. So we're going to talk about that later on tonight. But for now, I'm going to send things back on over to my colleagues, Steve right there uh, along the river walk thanks steph and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how steph reacts to tonight because this is her first day of the dead yeah. parade in san antonio so we're going to be seeing it through her eyes as a first but she hit this on the nail i mean it's cultural yes there's certainly a tradition here mm -hmm. but it's also something that is deeply personal when you're talking about the loved ones that you've lost and celebrating their lives. And that is so integral to what we're gonna be doing tonight. Yes, because it, Dia de los Muertos, really it's a time to celebrate, but it is nostalgic, right? You bring up those memories and you're able to share them. So there may be a few tears out there, but really it's part of healing too. So what better way than to heal with a community by sharing the stories of loved ones. And again, just the, the beautiful colors, the, the history that comes with this beautiful celebration. And San Antonio loves celebration that yes, is for sure <laughs> but we'll, we'll see you guys tonight at eight then of course the post parade party comes your way from nine to ten until then let's go back to the studio and tim and myra all right steve and alicia thank you guys so much and coming up in our next half hour we're going to answer a lot of questions in our q a segment about the origins of dia de los muertos the traditions the questions you may have about what this celebration is all about so that's coming your way in about 20 or so minutes uh, I don't want to brag, but uh, <laughs> this weather is pretty great. You're welcome. I'll be sending you my bill, so uh, <laughs> check your inboxes. Uh, 50 are morning low, up to 74 today. Both those numbers several degrees below average for this time of year. We will take it. We did have some spots jump into the mid-80s today. 84 the high in Del Rio, 86 in Catula, but with low humidity, it felt great. Now, it was another breezy day after a couple of gusty days, and even right now, our wind speeds are generally about 10 to 20 miles per hour, but I can promise you that they're going to continue to drop as the night goes on, especially once the sun goes down. So by 8 p.m. winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and then very light winds for the rest of the night overnight into the start of the weekend. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast, get you your trick or treating forecast as well coming up in just a bit. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story brought to you by Toyota. Day of the Dead has been celebrated one way or another for thousands of years, and many of its current traditions are rooted in Aztec beliefs. One being we keep our ancestors alive by remembering them. That makes 2021 a special year. 500 years ago, the Spanish conquered the Aztecs. If your ancestors were indigenous or Spanish or both, this 500th anniversary is a time to remember them. 1521 changed everything. Want to pay your respects to the Aztecs this Day of the Dead? Here's an idea. Visit Brackenridge Park at sunset on November 2nd and leave some flowers at the statue of Guatemec, the Aztecs' last emperor. Tonight, we're getting a closer look and a different angle at what happened just minutes before a shooting in a parking lot across the street from John Jay High School. Federal transportation officials, they're calling it a crisis. They estimate the number of traffic fatalities in 2021 reached the highest levels in 15 years. Yeah, our Samuel King joins us now live. Samuel, Texas among the 15 states that account for half of the nation's traffic deaths. And Tim and Myra, the state will soon get more federal help through technical resources to address the issues of roadway departures and pedestrian deaths. Federal Highway Administration says crashes caused by highway departures happen when vehicles cross an edge line or over a center line. It estimates that those uh, the roadway departures account for 50% of traffic fatalities, with pedestrian deaths accounting for 16%. San Antonio region also stands to receive more data analysis and other resources to ad directly address pedestrian fatalities. Councilmember Melissa Cavella Harvada is the vice chair of the Alamo area MPO. She's happy to see the resources come to town. The approach that the federal government seems to be taking is the same approach that we've been talking about at the local level 
our emphasis has been, of course, to reduce speeds and uh, really looking at making our, our streets safer. And Harvard uh, cites Calabra Road as one place that could benefit from safer street designs like protected bike lanes and more lights and signage. Safety measures now officially supported by the Federal Highway Administration. TxDOT tells us tonight it is reviewing the information from the federal government. If nothing changes by November 7th, it will be 21 years since the last day without a reported traffic fatality in Texas. 21 years. So be safe on the evening commute tonight. And speaking of that commute, some delays uh, downtown, as you see. This is the Transguide view from I-10 at Frio. You can see uh, traffic really slowing down as it approaches downtown, as you saw the activity for the Day of the Dead parade and everything else. So coming in from uh, Bernie, 27 minutes, but the real issue is when you come inside 1604, 21 minutes now between 1604 downtown, you see the red there as you are approaching downtown. Also on the north side, some big slowdowns, 19 minutes between 281 and I-10. A couple of crashes reported there at I-10 and Loop 410, so watch out for that. And also this starting at the top of the hour, the ramp from Loop 410 to FM 78 will be closed through the weekend. You'll have to go up to Riddiman and then turn around if you want to access that road. Busy evening in traffic as it's been all week, Tim and Myra. Thank you, Samuel. Let's take a live look outside with Sky 12 this Friday night, high above Heroes Stadium, ready for some big game coverage. There is a big game there. That is where our Greg Simmons is, and we'll be checking in with him a little bit later. Perfect weather for football, parade, anything you're doing outside tonight. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And it's going to continue through the weekend. That's the good news. P wonderful. Because there's, you know, there's a big holiday this yeah. weekend. There is a big holiday. It's very outfit dependent. Right? You know, and <laughs> gosh, and sometimes there are some years where we're sweating in the costumes. Mm -hmm. We've got rain soaked costumes uh, because this is the time of year where we get cold fronts coming through with a little more consistency. So Halloween is kind of always a wild card when it comes to the weather. Uh, here's some interesting climatology when it comes to Halloween here in San Antonio. The warmest we've ever been on Halloween, 89 degrees. That was back in 1997. The coldest, 27 back in 93. Kind of glad. Kind of glad we're not dealing with that. And the most rain we've ever gotten on Halloween was in 1896, one and three quarters inches of rain. This Halloween, humor me please, cute dog, cute cat, Halloween is looking really good. We'll top out in the low 80s late Sunday afternoon and then a nice drop into the 60s by Sunday evening. Clear skies, winds will still be light. Humidity will still be low, so it's looking really good for Halloween this year. Always happy to deliver good news. 73 now at the airport. We've already got some upper 60s in the hill country, and it is warmer off to the south and west. 84 now in Carrizo Springs and 83 in Del Rio. But thankfully, even for spots that got into the mid 80s this afternoon, humidity was low. Our dew points are still in the 20s and 30s, so it is bone dry out there. Just really, really comfortable. And while it's been another breezy day, these wind speed numbers are going to gradually fall off as the evening goes on by early tomorrow morning and for much of the day on Saturday, they'll just be down near five miles per hour. So once we get the sun down uh, tonight, winds will drop to closer to five miles per hour for most of the night, and that's where they'll stay through the overnight hours. So combination of really light winds, really dry air, and clear skies, those three things together, great recipe for our temperatures to really bottom out. And a lot of us will start off in the 40s tomorrow morning, so a chilly start, but don't let that fool you. If you're going to be out for a good portion of the day tomorrow, just know we're going to see a big swing in our temperatures by the afternoon. Warm tomorrow, but still very comfortable with our humidity staying low. And we've got a few more days with some lower humidity dew points 30s this weekend. By early next week, by the middle of next week, these dew point numbers do start to climb a bit. Thankfully, they won't get too sky high, but you'll probably start to notice the humidity by the early part of next week, certainly by about Wednesday, and then that's when our next chance of rain comes into play. So as we look at the future cast and surface analysis for this weekend, high pressure will be with us. That means things are going to be quiet and 
really, really nice. But by early next week, really for us Wednesday, uh, there will be the slow moving front starting to work into Texas, and this will bring us our next chance of rain, likely beginning uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night, and then into Thursday as that front moves through the area. So that'll be our next chance of rain, and it also looks like we could see a pretty significant temperature drop behind that front late next week. Still a couple days to look at the data, but we'll keep you updated. In the meantime, uh, just really quiet weather tonight. We'll start off in the 40s in the morning, near 80 in the afternoon, another day with low humidity. Very nice weather continues into Halloween, and then some changes by the middle of next week with that front. Potentially highs in the 60s this time next week, guys. Good weather to take down the Halloween decorations, which maybe will be helped by the wind and the rain. <laughs> I was going to say some may be down yes. already. <laughs> all right, so we have talked about all that is going on tonight. We have got another packed night of high school football. Where are we headed this evening? That's always the question. Greg Simmons is out at one of many games at Hero Stadium. <laughs> We're live at Hero Stadium for the big game and our big game coverage. And as Katie predicted, the winds have started to die down. Both teams out on the field right now getting ready for the nice big District 28-6A showdown between Johnson and Reagan. When we come back, we'll have a live preview from Hero Stadium. Plus, it doesn't sound good if you're counting on Dak for Sunday coming up. Everybody and welcome live to Hero Stadium for the big game and our big game coverage tonight. That's where number three and undefeated Johnson plays host to number eight Reagan to see who wins the District 28-6A battle tonight, that championship. But we also have another district title on the line in our big game coverage road trip. Our first stop tonight will be in Carn City to see if the Badgers can beat Nixon Smiley, but a quick drive up Highway 181 finds us in Poe to see who wins the district title in 15-3 Division II between the number three Pirates and the number nine Natalia Mustangs in 12's top 12. The Poe Pirates, by the way, coming into tonight's showdown with the Mustangs with a 7-1 record, 5-0 in district. Their only loss has been to defending 2A state champion Shiner, 39-10. But in district, they have four shutouts and have allowed only one touchdown. Running back Zane Rabe has 734 yards rushing, Nine touchdowns, another touchdown receiving to lead the Pirates into tonight's game where they're looking for their fifth straight district title. It's going to be a playoff atmosphere. It's going to be, you know, this, both stands going to be packed. There's going to be people everywhere. It's going to be a really, really good game. Biggest game of the district because it is for the championship. But we've been practicing hard and the focus has been intense and we're ready to go out there and show them what we have. I have a lot of respect for Coach Martinez and the staff and, and the job they do. And I know this, they'll come here ready to play football on Friday night. Uh, they're going to be fundamentally sound, real disciplined uh, football team and, and get after it. All right, the Natalia Mustangs, who are 7-1 overall as well, an undefeated in District 4-0, will be looking to win their first district title since 1989. The only loss of the season for the Mustangs came against the Cole Cougars, 26-24. But they also have two shutouts on the season, including their district opener against Dilly, 46 to nothing. have only allowed just over six points a game in district play behind dual-threat quarterback Ryan Rizzo, who has thrown for 1,315 yards in the air, 18 touchdowns, to go along with his 229 yards on the ground, another seven TDs. I can't remember the last time we beat them. They were a very good team. And last year, we lost, I believe, by two points, and we we're looking to come for the victory this year. It's a game I've been looking forward to since August. We've um, been putting in the work during the summer, and uh, this all season we've been looking for this, so it means everything to me. Well coached, physical, big, fast. Uh, you know, Pope, the, the Pope that we know, that's who they are for sure. All right, and don't forget, we'll be in Pope tonight. Kickoff is at 7.30, and K-Satchel Sports will be there. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It's beginning to look more and more like Dak Prescott will not be able to play when the Dallas Cowboys meet the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday night football. That is based on what head coach Mike McCarthy is saying after the Cowboys work out before they travel to Minnesota tomorrow. Prescott, who is on fire this season, throwing for over 1,800 yards and 16 touchdowns, an insane 73% completion rate, is the main reason why the Cowboys are on a five-game win streak. But he strained his right calf, throwing the game-winning touchdown in overtime in New England two weeks ago. And if you listen to his head coach, it's not encouraging. It's more than just this game. I mean, we're obviously in our seventh game, so there's a ton of football left to play. Um, so that, that's definitely part of the decision, and you know, just giving him the time that's needed to 
you know, take it all in. You know, I'll just to give you an update. He was he was sore when he came in today, but that was that was part of the plan. Where uh, you know he did more yesterday, Thursday than he did on Wednesday. All right. He's more listed right now officially as questionable. Houston Texans head coach David Culley announcing today that rookie Davis Mills will continue to be their starting quarterback in the middle of a six-game losing streak. Tyrod Taylor, who injured his hamstring in week two, is not ready to return against the Rams. Live from Hero Stadium, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Greg. Our KSAT Q&A is coming up next. It is a celebration rooted in remembrance and cultural traditions. By now, you know that there is a gorgeous celebration happening along the Riverwalk in just about an hour from now, the Dia de los Muertos River Parade. A lot of questions about this holiday, what's yeah. going into it, the roots of it. So here to explain all of that, we have John Philip Santos. He is a distinguished senior lecturer in Mestizo Cultural Studies at UTSA. We're so happy to have you back here uh, on this segment with us, and I, I want to start with the basics. What is Day of the Dead? What is Dia de los Muertos? Well, buenas noches, Myra and Tim. Uh, Dia de los Muertos is a, a tradition uh, in Mexico that is rooted in the Aztec world, as was told in a beautiful piece y'all aired a little earlier in this newscast. Um, you know, the Aztecs have a very different sense of the way that life and death intermingle. Um, the, the worlds of the living and the dead interpenetrate in this world through a a host of 13 heavens and nine underworlds. Um, and, uh, and those worlds of the living and the dead um, are accessible in this world through special places like springs and gorges and particular canyons. And so this day reminds uh, us that, that the living and the dead live alongside each other. So it's not as if this one day is the only day that the dead can be among us, as is the case, for instance, in the European practice of Walpurgisnacht or All Souls Eve. So this is a, a reminder of our origins in Mexico, uh, not just for those who are Mexican-American, Chicano, Chicana, Chicanex folks, but for, for all of us who live here in San Antonio that were rooted in, in the world from the South. So, you know, the awakening of this tradition in San Antonio is, I think, a very profound statement about what's happening to us as Americans uh, embracing these traditions. Yeah, you're starting to touch on a point. We were talking to you in the break before we started this segment, and you were mentioning that, you know, this was not a part of your experience growing up in San Antonio, and it's just within the last few years as we've seen this parade come on that there's been an awakening of this tradition here in San Antonio and hopefully across the United States. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, it would be very interesting to delve into the history of the Los Muertos in San Antonio, to what extent it was widely practiced among Mexican-American communities here early in the 20th century, late in the 19th century, when we had become a minority in the city. But by the end of the 20th century, this had become a, a Mexican city again, in a sense, a secret Mexican city. And, um, and these traditions that existed in, in our past were awakened, I think, in, in large part here in San Antonio through the work of artists like Terry Ibanez and Franco Mondini Ruiz, Danny Lozano and his Tienda Guadalupe. All of these artists sought to reconnect to these sources of our identity in, in Mexico. And literally, this, this tradition was awakened, especially in the late 80s, early 90s. So what we see tonight in terms of this grand and flamboyant river parade observing this this occasion really has its roots in this artistic insurgency a kind of a, a vision that that a group of artists had to revive these traditions alongside the the traditions that might have been held in families you know, traditionally you go to the cemetery you take an offering to the dead uh, the the most traditional you leave trails of marigolds orange marigolds sempasuchil to to lead the dead to your house there's an ofrenda there and you prepare a dinner for them you prepare dinner and you put out some quality tequila, some top shelf tequila. So, um, you know, the whole tradition has this connection to Aztec sources. But we see in San Antonio the awakening, awakening of this tradition to an American future. Uh, just like tacos, Dia de los Muertos has become part of the American body. And um, I think that shows promise of just how ineffective borders are at 
stopping cultural transmission. Yeah, you know, we, we talked to you about the history of the taco uh, in one of our Case That Explains episodes, and there's a lot more history there than people might realize. But I'm glad that you point out the artistic connection here, because if somebody doesn't really know much about Dia de los Muertos, you look around San Antonio this time of year, you see the art. You know that that obviously plays a really important role. So talk a little bit about perhaps some of the symbols, the symbolic things that are placed on ofrendas, the, the calaveras, the sugar skulls. Uh, what are some of the sort of mainstays you see this time of year? The, the skulls, certainly the proliferation of skulls, some of them rendered in sugar, some in chocolate, some in clay. Uh, but sempachuchil is the, is the principal flower used in these observances, the orange marigold. Uh, and then, of course, photographs, memories, artifacts of the ancestors who have passed. And, you know, the, the iconography that we are, are familiar with of the comical skulls and skeletons, they really have an artistic origin as well. Jose Luis Posada, the great Mexican artist, um, he was the one who visualized the Catrinas, the decorated skeletons. And it was a way of lampooning the wealthy. It was lampooning the elites. In fact, in Mexico, what you see even today is a lot of improvisation. So um, anything goes. Uh, the ofrendas can be mashups of um, very traditional elements, along with maybe some anime characters or some Pokemons, or it could be in, uh, the Frito Bandito. Um, so there's a lot of irony and humor in the way that the the, the tradition has been traditionally practiced. Um, and, and we see a lot of that in all of the the, the fanciful ways that people dress up and the kind of statuary of effigies they use in the parade tonight. It's one of the beautiful things about this holiday. It is about remembering lost loved ones, but there's so much celebration in that. And I appreciate you taking the time to educate all of us on what this holiday is all about. And we'll watch and see how it grows in San Antonio in the years ahead. John Philip Santos with Amen. UTSA. Thanks for sharing some time. Thank you so much, y'all. Be well. Thank you to you, too. Feliz Dia de los Muertos. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Welcome back, everyone. Some construction to tell you about. This is Transguide Loop 410 in Ingram. In a couple of hours, the southbound lanes will be closed uh, through the weekend through Marbach because of some uh, road work out on Loop 410 on the west side. Again, that begins at 9, runs through the weekend. I told you earlier about this uh, ramp closure here, Loop 410 to FM 78. You'll have to go up to Rudiman and turn around if you want to get on 78. Still a busy evening on the roads. A lot going on. High school football, the parade course downtown uh, later this evening, so we are keeping our eye on a couple of spots. This is 35 uh, northbound at O'Connor. We had a crash crash people really crawling from loop 410 to O'Connor. Also, finally, on the west side here, we had a crash 151 at military 18 minutes between 1604 and 410. Pack your patience if you're heading out to him and Myra. All right, thanks, Samuel. Look outside with live cam. We're talking about all the events happening tonight throughout the weekend. But this weather, that's mm -hmm. that's for everybody. I mean, <laughs> no real complaints. Oh, yeah. Um, thankfully, you won't have to think about the weather much this weekend. We're going to see things stay <laughs> pretty pleasant. This is the one time of year I get to use this graphic. I had to dust it off, get Wonderful. it ready to go. And this is your, I mean, this is your holiday. I, right? do, I do love this one. Oh. 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 oh, there's a ghost in the Hello. studio. Hello. Not scared away by the warm temperatures in here. <laughs> Square face. Yeah, it is a little pussy in here. Um, this is your trick or treat forecast, by the way. Sunday evening, 6 p.m. We're in the 70s. By 8 p.m. We're down in the 60s. It's going. It's it's going to be nice. Thank you for humoring me. Uh, we'll take another look at your full forecast coming up in just a few. I, I'm minutes. glad we're doing that because I just just paying attention to the ghost. I'm gonna need to. <laughs> All right, we got a beautiful weekend ahead. A lot of people, of course, wondering trick or treat time. How are things going to be? Nothing spooky about the weather. No, no, not at all. It's all treats. No tricks. <laughs> oh, perfect. That's the most overused pun. But like you said, the it's the one weather. time a year. It's true. This is it. It's true. So buckle in the next couple of days <laughs> because I'm taking you on a wild ride with the graphics and everything like that. And um, when we get to this time of year, it's also important to think about time change that is around the corner 
Uh, so today our sunset is at 650, but a week from Sunday, daylight saving time ends and that means our sunset time falls back into the five o'clock hour. So that change is around the corner. We've got a little bit more than a week to go, but uh, just go ahead and start preparing yourself for that. We won't worry about that this weekend though, because it's just going to be so nice. 40s tomorrow morning near 80 tomorrow afternoon. A very similar story by Sunday, just a few degrees warmer. I don't really even think you'll notice though. Uh, temperatures currently across the state warm off to the southwest from Del Rio down to Laredo. We're in the low 80s, uh, but in some parts of North Texas, they're in the upper 60s at 67 currently in Tyler. So a very pleasant day and there is some cooler air off to the east and northeast 53 now in Cleveland, 55 in Memphis. There's a lot of cloud cover and rain across the eastern tier of the country. Pretty strong upper level low that swung through our area a couple days ago is now well off to the east producing some rain uh, across a good uh, swath of the eastern seaboard there uh, that is moving away from us and will have no impact on our forecast off in the Pacific Northwest another piece of rain making energy this red and orange color here that's also going to stay well off to our north so over the next several days we won't have really any rain making energy moving in all the way through the weekend and early next week now as we get into Wednesday Thursday of next week that will start to change. We'll have our next frontal boundary moving through and a little piece of upper level rain making energy moving in. And that's when we'll see our rain chances return lower on Wednesday, uh, but it looks like they'll peak late Wednesday, early Thursday at a chance of some scattered rain. We'll be fine tuning those rain chances over the next several days. We'll also likely be fine tuning or afternoon highs for next week behind this next front. It does look like we could see our biggest cool down so far with these cold fronts uh, down with high temperatures potentially just in the 60s as we get into Thursday, Friday of next week. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you. In the meantime, like I said, we'll just enjoy the great weather this weekend. Currently 75 in Pleasanton down into the upper 60s in Kerrville, 30, 66 in Fredericksburg. So as our wind speeds drop, They've already dropped a good bit just over the past couple hours. As our wind speeds become light tonight, we'll see our air temperatures really, really bottom out. And if the wind has been a nuisance the past couple of days, it really has been. Uh, you'll be happy to know that winds will be light through the weekend early next week, not becoming breezy again until about Wednesday. So we'll have a chance to kind of Break all the leaves, gather the uh, Halloween decorations that have uh, flown about. We'll have a chance to do that this weekend with light and variable winds tomorrow. 45 in the morning, but a big swing in our temperatures up to 80 in the afternoon. So if you'll be out for a good portion of the day tomorrow, even on Sunday, dress in layers because it will get pretty warm, but comfortable with dry air through the weekend. Next pretty big set of changes will be Wednesday into Thursday of next week with the arrival of that next front. And of course, we'll be here to keep you updated over the weekend. Guys. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. Police responded to the scene on West Commerce Street, not too far from Our Lady of the Lake University, close to 11 o'clock last night. Police say the victim, a man in his 30s, was inside with two other people when there was a knock at the door. They say his door was changed, but the suspect managed to get his gun inside, firing off a shot, hitting the victim in the chest. New at five, two men accused in the fatal shootings of three people back in August are now indicted on capital murder charges. That shooting happened at the Boom Boom Sports Bar on South New Braunfels back on August 15th. This week, a Bear County grand jury handing down separate indictments for Daniel Berrigan and Eduardo De La Rosa. The two were accused in the deaths of April Rodriguez, Mauro Rodriguez, and Dan Martinez. Breaking news on the COVID-19 vaccine front. Yeah, the Food and Drug Administration giving the okay for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine in children ages 5 to 11. The recommended dose is only a third of the dose given to adults and teens. 28 million kids could be eligible for the vaccine as early as next week under the emergency use authorization. The CDC is scheduled to meet next week to discuss detailed recommendations on which children should get vaccinated. And the Day of the Dead River Parade starts at 7.30 tonight. We will be broadcasting it all right here on KSAT 12 and on KSAT.com starting at 8 o'clock. It will also stream live on the KSAT TV app available 
any way you stream. And you heard about that after party. Stick around for the Day of the Dead after party with Stefania Jimenez and SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky. There will be live demonstrations, music. It all starts at 9. Of course, that will be followed at 10 by the night beat. <laughs> We are just about an hour away now from our broadcast of the Day of the Dead River Parade. You have seen the sights, the sounds of everything setting up down there along the river walk. It's going to be a beautiful night. Tune in at 8 o'clock right here or on the KSAT TV app, our website as well, KSAT.com. And then there's an after party, all the celebrations going from 8 to 10 tonight, but the night beat starts right after that. The party continues at 10. With Tim Gerber. If you are heading uh, downtown for that, things are getting a little bit better on the roads, but you notice there's a lot of red there. There's a lot of uh, icons there as well. We're going to take a look at the northwest side. Still seeing some uh, delays there on Loop 410. 20 minutes now between 151 and I-10. Still crews still on the scene of a crash there, right there at the crossroads area. So watch out for that. Uh, this is Loop 410 in Ingram. You can see some slow traffic uh, building there. And let's take you downtown. I-10, Frio, the headlights are there, Katie. We are a few minutes past official sunset time and winds will continue to relax for the rest of the night. We've got beautiful weather all the way through the weekend early next week with our next rain chance instead of changes Wednesday into Thursday next week. We'll keep you updated on that part of the forecast over the next few days. In the meantime, enjoy guys. This is good information. I still have costumes to make. <laughs> Hopefully everyone's dressed by Sunday. Thanks have for fun, watching. <laughs>